Hello, I'm Father George Salzman of the Harvard Catholic Center. We're here on Cambridge Common, right by the Irish Famine Monument. It was dedicated by the first woman to be president of Ireland, Mary Robinson, uh, on the anniversary of the famine in 97, uh, the anniversary of the worst year of the famine. Um, I'd like to see it through the eyes of perhaps the most astute uh, American, uh, and that would be Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin was the uh, youngest boy of 17 kids. He only had two years of school. He only had two years of school, and yet, halfway through his life, in 1753, the same year, he was given honorary degrees, honorary degrees by Harvard and by Yale. He was also made a fellow of the Royal Society across the ocean. And he also got, he was the first non-Brit to get the uh, gold copy medal uh, from the Royal Society for his, his work on electricity and his invention of the lightning rod. Um, he also then had done many things as a statesman, as a politician, as a writer, as a writer, and among the things that was happening, he was being sent as agent to England, and from 1757 to 75, he was there in London as an agent for, Mass for, for first of all, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and then Georgia, and eventually Massachusetts. That sort of landed him in the soup because there were so many rebels in Massachusetts, in particular, to go down with. One person who gave him grief was the Secretary for the Colonies, Lord Hillsborough, who treated him shoddily. And then as time went on, uh, Franklin became a bit suspicious that he was kind of treating him more kindly and wondered what cunning was behind that and what plan was behind that. He was invited out to Lord Hillsborough's uh, country home as a state in Ireland over in County Down. So he went over, Franklin did, to Dublin and he was amazed at how beautiful Dublin was, but then he got a carriage, he rented a carriage, and went around uh, beyond Dublin uh, to see how the average people lived. And he realized that three quarters of the people were living in mud and straw huts, really, and uh, they were in rags. And the only food they had was seemed to be potatoes. This is back in 1771, as he writes a letter here to Thomas Cushing. And so he's just amazed, astounded, at how impoverished they are. And uh, later on, he would go to Scotland and sort of find the same thing. And then, because he's certainly the most perspicacious person, someone said to him, well, why don't you ship all your food out to the West Indies? And uh, he said, no, no, we prefer to keep the beef and the butter for ourselves, and the same with the cloth. Uh, we wear the cloth, we don't sell it to someone else. And he began to realize that Ireland's economy was governed by the same trade regulations and the laws of England uh, that we were and would be. And so if this were colonial exploitation that he saw there in Ireland, saw there in Scotland, was going to gradually become what America would expect from England, uh, then diplomacy alone would not solve the problem. As he wrote to Thomas Cushing, our poorest New England farmers live like princes next to the people that I saw in Ireland, next to the people that I saw in Scotland. Now that was 1771. This is the Great Hunger the famine monument for the, the potato famine in Ireland in the 1840s, the later 1840s. And this was, uh, as I say, dedicated by Mary Robinson. Uh, there's also one down in front of uh, Old South Church in, in downtown Boston, uh, which is very moving as well. Uh, and in, in that period, a million, million Irish starved to death, a million left the country to avoid starvation. We don't know how many died in the coffin ships on the way over the ocean uh, to other places. But the fact remains that while those, that starvation was happening, the, the British were shipping food out of Ireland, shipping food out of Ireland, confirming Ben Franklin's worst fears. You know what it says? So this is well worth a visit, this monument, uh, to think on. The other side of it says, never again should a people starve in a world of plenty. Never again should a people starve in a world of plenty. Marty Sen, the former master of Trinity, uh, uh, university professor here at Nobel Laureate in Economics. Marty has said, has said uh, you never have a famine in a country with a real democracy and a free press. The Irish didn't have that. It's important that we do. Um, what was it that Ben Franklin was asked at the end of his life, up in years, when he would attend the Constitutional Convention? As it was all over and he was leaving, a woman came up to him and asked, uh, Mr. Franklin, what do we have? And he said, he said to her, uh, what that you have a republic if you can keep it. It's the job of all of us. The job to look after people in need everywhere, every time. God bless you.